coordinator for for David Douglas School District. For tonight's meeting, we will have Spanish, Vietnamese, Chinese, Russian, and Somali interpretation. We will start by providing instructions on how to join an interpretation room. Um, at the end of all the language room instructions, you will see a globe icon appear on your screen. If you want to listen to this presentation in English, please click on the icon and select English. You will automatically join the English room. If you cannot find the globe icon, please click more located at the bottom of your screen, select language interpretation, then select English and click done. As a reminder, you will see the icon appear on your screen at the end of the instructions. Para los padres de familia que quieren escuchar esta presentación en español, cuando terminemos de ofrecer las instrucciones de cómo entrar a un cuarto de interpretación, en la parte inferior de su pantalla encontrará un icono del mundo. Haga clic en el icono y seleccione español. Usted automáticamente entrará al cuarto de interpretación en español. Si no encuentra el icono del globo, haga clic more localizado en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Seleccione language interpretation, seleccione español y presione done, D-O-N-E. Usted escuchará el audio original a un 20% de volumen. Si no quiere escuchar el audio original, solo presione mute original audio. Thank you. Hello. Xin um, chào quý vị. Cảm ơn quý vị đã tham dự vào cuộc uh, họp tối nay về uh, chương trình đề nghị cho ngôn ngữ á, à, ngôn ngữ nghệ thuật của uh, trường trung học uh, David Douglas. Tôi tên là Dung Nguyễn. Tôi là thông dịch viên cho um, uh, tiếng Việt. Um, Ở, ở cuối màn hình quý vị sẽ thấy biểu tượng quả địa cầu vui lòng bấm vào biểu tượng và chọn tiếng Việt quý vị sẽ tự động tham gia phòng phiên dịch tiếng Việt nếu quý vị không thể tìm thấy biểu tượng quả địa cầu vui lòng nhấp vào thêm là more ở cuối màn hình của quý vị chọn thông dịch ngôn ngữ chọn tiếng Việt và bấm hoàn tất là chữ đơn cảm ơn quý vị thank you Thank you. Всем добрый вечер. В нижней части экрана вы увидите значок глобуса. Пожалуйста, нажмите на иконку и выберите русский язык. Вы автоматически присоединитесь к русской комнате перевода. Если вы не можете найти значок земного шара, нажмите еще внизу экрана. Выберите переводчик языка, выбираем русский и нажимаем «Готово». Окей, thank you. Go ahead, Fardosa. Fardosa. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I was muted. I'm so sorry. Okay. Halka. Okay, I'm going to start over. Halka Jose E. Shashada, Wahad Arkidonta, Astanta, Globe. Fadlan Kudufo, Astanta, Odoro, Somali. Wahad Sitos A, Ugu Biridonta, Halka, Tujimatka, O Somali. Hadi Adan Helikerin, Astanta, Globe. Fadlan Kudufo, Inka, Padan, Haga Jose E. Shashada, Doro Turjubanka Lukada, O A Somali, O Atkehelisit. Thank you.
Okay, so your language realm should be open. Is that correct, Aide? That's correct. Thank you so much for checking, Brooke. So everyone, your all the interpretation rooms should be open, including English. So please, if you want to listen to this presentation in English, please click English. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you. And thank you everyone for being here tonight to learn about our high school language arts adoption. We're really excited to share our process with you and also to have you hear from the two publishers um, that we are looking at and considering for our next adoption. For those uh, families and community members that couldn't be here tonight, this uh, presentation will be recorded and will be on our website for later viewing. So if you know anybody who wanted to attend, please let them know this will be available. My name is Brooke O'Neill and I'm the Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Um, and we're, as I said, we're very excited to be able to adopt language arts curriculum this year. And when I say language arts, I mean reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So that's what language arts means. And in Oregon, um, we get to adopt a new content area every seven years. So our school board has been very supportive of our district in keeping us on track with the state adoption cycle. This year, uh, the state adoption cycle is for language arts. Next year, looking ahead, it will be for math. So every seven years, we get to adopt new materials. And so these materials that we select for this adoption will be in our classrooms and in the hands of our students for the next seven years. So it's a very important decision that we're going to make. And we, we need your input on that decision so that we can make the best decision possible for our students. Next slide, please. So our agenda this evening is we're doing our welcomes and uh, you will get to hear about our leadership team and see who is on our adoption committee. Uh, but we also want to share with you our adoption process so that you know how we choose instructional materials. You're gonna have an opportunity to hear from both of our publishers um, that were down to the final two, uh, open up resources and inquiry by design. The publishers will present for 15 minutes and then there will be a question and answer five minutes and you can write questions in the chat or you can also raise your hand when that time comes. Um, and we started with multiple publishers. I do want to say that we start with the state adopted curriculum. All of the curriculum that we review were adopted by the State Board of Education and go through a very rigorous process. And then we narrow down based on our local priorities, which you're gonna hear more about a little bit later on. And then you're also gonna hear about your role in this process and how you can give feedback. Next slide, please. So this is our adoption committee. And um, first of all, I wanna start by having our leadership team introduce themselves and their role in the process. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elise Hall and I am the Assistant Director of Title Programs. Good evening, my name is Carrie Foster and I am the Online Curriculum Integration Coordinator. And not with us tonight is Francesca Altman, and she is the School Improvement Coordinator at Alice Ott Middle School. And so you can see uh, by the names that you see on the screen, maybe some of these are your um, students' teachers. These are the teachers that are on the committee. And we also have one um, principal representative from Fur Ridge School. Now, this isn't necessarily the grade they teach. The grade listed here are the materials that they will be piloting. So our teachers right now are trying out lessons. And so, for example, Rose will be implementing ninth grade lessons for the purpose of our pilot. But they may teach more than the grade level listed here. So please, if you see any of these teachers or any of our leadership team members, please um, tell them thank you. They are giving a lot of their time to make this very important decision. And this is above and beyond their teaching duties, but they are committed uh, to making sure that our students and David Douglas have the best materials possible. So I'm gonna turn it over to Carrie, who's gonna share with us our process. So this is our um, language arts adoption timeline here in David Douglas. We have a very thorough process that takes about a year. 
the Language Arts Adoption Committee was formed last spring. These are teachers who volunteered to be on the committee knowing the very heavy time commitment. This year long commitment includes professional learning on the science of reading, anti racist anti bias training, a systematic review of all state approved curriculum that Brooke had mentioned, and data analysis of student feedback. The committee more, uh, members have engaged in over 45 hours of synchronous and asynchronous work for this adoption thus far, and there's a lot more to come. Next slide, please. So elevating student voice has been a very important part of our adoption process because students are our primary stakeholders. We gathered student voice in two different ways through a student survey given to students in grades three through 12, and through some student empathy interviews that were conducted in grades first through 12. Student empathy interviews are students telling us their stories and reading stories about reading and writing and what matters to them. For example, we asked students to tell us about a time that learning was exciting or interesting at school. We also asked students to tell us about what they wish they could spend more time reading and writing about at school. So we learned there were several themes of what students want in a curriculum. Those themes include content that connects to current times and issues they face in their lives, learning about their own culture and other cultures, lessons and books that represent multiple perspectives and identities, that the lessons include interactive assignments and ex experiences, choice in what they learn, read, and write about, and multiple ways to show, to learn and show what they learned. So really students wanted the opportunity to be creative. Next slide, please. So in addition to student voice, other drivers of our priorities are represented on this screen. As you saw before, we go through a very thorough vetting process. As you can see, there are a lot of different things that drive our local priorities. It includes our Freedom Dream number one that was developed by our staff of color, looking at research, analyzing our data and student feedback data, partnering with the Oregon Department of Education by reviewing ODE scorecard for each curriculum, and learning about how each publisher aligns with adoption, state adoption criteria. We also have been able to participate in several anti-racist, anti-bias trainings. The most recent training included analyzing text through an anti-racist, anti-bias lens. So all of these components together helped us develop our local priorities for adopting the next language arts curriculum in David Douglas. Next slide, please. So all of our learning and feedback narrow down to these six priorities that you see here. So these include student representation and text, embedded universal design for learning to allow for students to demonstrate their understanding in various ways, scaffolding that supports differentiation and building background knowledge to set students up for success in units and projects that they will engage in. So currently, our teachers are in the process of piloting and trying out some of the lessons. So as they are implementing the curriculum, they're looking for the degree to which each of these priorities are embedded within the curriculum. So you will see these priorities again in the community survey. You will be telling us which of these are the most important priorities for your student to succeed. Your feedback will be an important, important consideration as our team makes a recommendation for our next language arts curriculum. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Elise to learn more about your role in this process. Uh, before you go, Elise, um, Edith, Edith uh, raised her hand. Um, I'm going to allow Edith to talk if you have a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. All right, seems like that was accidental. So um, go ahead, Ms. Hall. 
Thank you. Um, so I wanted to share with you uh, your role in, um, in our decision making. Um, you are already playing a role by um, either being here this evening or uh, watching the recording of this event. And, um, and we thank you for your time and, um, and, look, and really looking forward to getting your feedback. You can reach out to a representative from the high school who is um, piloting the materials, or if you have a student who is attending for Ridge, reach out to uh, Ms. Straw around um, with questions around the adoption process, or if you wanted to explore the materials a little bit more, um, we would be able to help um, find um, someone who can help answer your questions. So de we definitely have um, representatives in our schools who can help with answering questions around uh, the materials. We are also providing uh, access to uh, demo accounts that, um, that show the student uh, perspective and the student experience within the curriculum. So while when we choose the materials that we will adopt, we will have physical books. We will have, um, we'll have books for students to have. We will have journals um, and different um, types of materials for students. All of the materials for you to uh, review are available to you online. Um, so you can see them and explore them um, from the comfort of your home uh, digitally. Furthermore, we ask that you then respond to our survey. And our survey asks you to let us know about um, uh, the priorities and what um, would um, best meet the needs of your student. And then, um, and then also if you've had a chance to the review the materials, uh, what your, uh, your feedback about that, those materials, if they would meet the needs of your student. So we appreciate that feedback from you. Uh, it does play an important part in our decision-making process. Our teachers who have been on the adoption team have been working with um, the materials and funneling them down. We started with seven, um, seven uh, curriculum that were appropriate for uh, the high school level that met the needs of the state and met the state's criteria. And then we have um, funneled that down and pared that down to um, two curriculum that we are now using in classrooms. As we use the classroom and uh, materials in the classroom, our teachers are asking the students as well for their feedback around the materials and student feedback, the teacher feedback and your feedback are all going to be used for our decision-making day in what we recommend to bring forward to the school board to adopt for our, um, for our curriculum. So your feedback is really important in this process. And I'm gonna to go to the next slide. I wanted to share a little bit about what you'll see um, when you go to fill out the survey. You would find on our David Douglas District website, uh, links to uh, review the materials, the demo materials. And then you will also find a link to a short questionnaire. The questionnaire asks you for some information, just some basic demographics of where your student attends and what grade level and then what you believe are the most important priorities for your student to succeed from those six priorities that our language arts adoption team have committed to. All of those are um, important, but we're asking for you to rate what's the most important and has the most impact for your student. There's also an optional question around um, which instructional materials you think would be best that would best meet the needs of your student. We ask that you have this information to us by March 21st as we move into spring break so that we are able to take that information and that data and, um, and collate it so that um, our decision making team can, can review it and use it in their decision making process. So our next steps are, our teachers will be piloting the materials from the two different publishers that you're going to hear from tonight. 
and they are gathering student voice and input around the lessons that they have um, implemented in their classroom. Teachers who are not part of the adoption team also have access to our demo accounts and can provide their feedback around the materials as well. And then our family and community members are providing feedback through our survey and through the opportunity to review the demo accounts and to connect with um, our high school staff who are piloting the materials. Finally, our language arts adoption committee will review all of the data, the student survey data, the family community feedback, and the, um, and the scoring that they have, um, their data that they have collected and the scoring that they've put together for each publisher and will um, and will determine which, which curriculum is the best to meet the needs of our high school students. They will make a recommendation to take to the board for approval on May 12th. At the May 12th board meeting, um, our curriculum adoption team will be presenting to the board which materials they recommend and why. And um, once the board approves materials, we will be purchasing those materials and moving into implementing those so that all classrooms will have all of the materials, um, either it's digital access or hard copies of materials available to them for September, 2022, when we start back at school. I'd like to show you a little bit of what you will see on our district website for accessing all of the resources that we are presenting tonight. You will find when you log on to the David Douglas district website, right under the, the top portion of the screen that rotates um, through several different topics. Underneath that is the latest news. And in that section is where you will find the, um, the page to click on for all of the resources from the publishers um, that are presenting tonight and the survey that we ask that you um, fill out and submit by uh, the beginning of spring break. We will walk through how to find those materials at the end of this evening after the publisher's presentation. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters um, and to Brooke O'Neill. Okay, so uh, now we're really excited to share our first uh, publisher and the first uh, curriculum that we are considering adopting. It is Open Up Resources, and here tonight with us is Dan Lindsay, and so uh, Luan, if you could kindly move him over to the panelist. Uh, just a reminder, um, Dan is going to present uh, to you and so that you can learn more about your students' experience if we choose these curriculum materials. He will present for 15 minutes and then you're going to have a chance to ask questions. So if you have a question, again, you can put it in the uh, question and answer in the chat or you can also raise your hand and we'll be sure to make sure you get the answer those last five minutes. So welcome, Dan. Uh, we're excited you're here with us again. Thank you for being here. I believe you're on East Coast time. Is that correct? So I am. <laughs> so I know it's almost 930 where you are. So we um, we are grateful that you are here to share with us about open um, up resources. So I'm going to turn it over to you and you'll have uh, till about 640 to present and then we'll do our questions. OK, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm actually going to stop my video. Um, my kids are still up, so uh, my Internet's getting eaten up a little bit here. So I am going to stop my video and share my screen. So I'm here today to present um, and share a little bit of information about the Odell curriculum, which is um, a curriculum that o Open Up Resources is a publisher for. Um, so today I'm going to share a little bit about um, our mission and work, overview the pilot, um, get into the student view, and then um, jump into some questions and answers. So a little bit about who we are. Um, we are a nonprofit. Our mission is equity. We're a deeply mission-driven organization, and we're really proud to help all schools provide the quality of instruction that students deserve. All of us on the development team are former educators, and we truly understand the importance of a high-quality curriculum. 
Um, we want to ensure that all students, regardless of zip code, uh, have access to a quality, joyful education. And that's kind of at the core of everything that we do. We live our mission of equity in many ways. One way is ensuring that all students' authentic voices are heard. All of our OER curriculum, so our open education resources, uh, curriculum are student-centered and allow for students to be truly active in their learning. You will also see an inclusion of diverse texts, authors, perspectives, and characters. Students are given opportunities to explore topics that can be a mirror for some and a windows, uh, windows for others. Um, we do this, and in this case, we partnered with Odell Education to bring materials, support, and the professional learning needed to effectively implement our high quality open source curricula. So this curriculum is also very highly rated via ed reports. But jumping into the curriculum itself, the Odell High School Literacy Program inspires creativity, builds knowledge, and enhances the skills students possess through student-centered and student-led analysis of robust texts and topics. The curriculum empowers students with literacy for a college career and civic life. Highlighted here um, in each grade level, grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, uh, the teachers and students will be piloting a selected section and lessons from the highlighted units. Um, I believe it's going to be from February 28th through March 18th. In grade 9, you can see they're doing the um, Romeo and uh, one section from Romeo and Juliet. Uh, grade 10, telling stories. Grade 11, the American dream of home ownership. And in grade 12, community. During this pilot, the students will have, have access to print materials needed for the lessons. Um, they are sampling as well as digital access via the Odell website. So they're going to have both print and digital access. During, um, during this um, pilot, the students are going to be um, reading plays like Romeo and Juliet, um, listening to the audio versions of text, analyzing videos um, they'll access digitally, um, reading from our unit readers, readers that are going to include short passages, um, poems, memoirs. They'll have digital access to short stories, um, short articles, additional videos. Um, and they may, uh, they may be accessing um, Khan Academy for additional um, video access as well. Students are going to be working towards the lesson goals and culminating tasks through different lesson activities that focus on reading, listening, viewing, presenting, discussing, in both informal um, settings with partners um, in groups or in class um, and formally as well. So in things like jigsaws, fish bowls, and Socratic seminars, and also doing writing in a variety of ways. Um, we're going to be um, all the tools for success for those students that to, to be done during this pilot, um, again, are going to be provided both digitally and in print. And um, they'll even have um, different graphic organizers, uh, question sets, culminating activities, checklists, journals provided both digitally and in print as well. Thinking about this, why does this all matter, right? Um, looking at this curriculum, the core principles of this curriculum are going to center around knowledge, agency, perspective, and support. With this curriculum, students learn how to take ownership of their own learning as they develop rich content knowledge and meet the standards. While doing this work, students are also working to understand how to take these skills and habits outside their classroom. Um, for example, how to collaborate, how to persevere, and how to effectively communicate and empathize with perspectives other than their own. In addition to teaching the ELA, teaching ELA standards of reading, writing, speaking, and listening, students are going to be 
building up their deep content knowledge and expertise, uh, which research shows leads to higher reading and test scores for students as they're able to build context around what they're reading in the classroom. Additionally, curriculum helps students to form their own identities. Students with diverse backgrounds and experiences are celebrated in the classroom. While empowering their, them to find their voice, we want to help them train their ears and eyes to the stories being told. Um, what voices are the loudest? What voices are often missing? Calling attention to these questions can help them wonder and learn through exploration and discussion. And finally, we want, our, we want our students to be successful. There is an extensive support built out at the highest levels of the program down to the daily lessons and activities. All students and teachers deserve to be supported in this work and the authors have created the tools and resources to really ensure that this happens. So I'm gonna pause right there um, and just kind of jump in and see um, if there are um, some questions about the curriculum and how else I can support you. Uh, James has a question, so I'll allow him to talk. Go ahead, James, uh, unmute and ask your question. Hi there, uh, this is James. I was uh, looking through um, uh, different websites uh, concerning your guys' company, and uh, I just had a question about, is the Bill and, McGill, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation still funding your um, operation? Um, that's a great question, James. Thank you. Um, they are no longer um, founding our company, um, formally um, funding our company. We actually are um, standing, we are fully internally funded now. Fantastic. And um, are you guys going to be exiting the common core standard that's not accepted by any college in the United States? Um, currently, we are um, that I'm, I'm not sure of that, but at this time, we do align to the Common Core standards for our K to 12 curriculums, um, just because that is something across the, the 50 states that, uh, that are they're aligning to. Thank you. Yeah, and James, I can add to that a little bit too, because those um, standards are adopted by our state. And so that is what we um, are held accountable for what students should know and be able to do. And part of the, the point of the Common Core is actually college preparedness. So, um, so it is, you know, a little bit different at the college level, but um, those are the standards to which um, we are held accountable to and to which um, as back the, the assessments um, assess uh, for our students. Great question. Casey has a question as well. I'm just wondering if, if we can get some examples of actual pieces of literature that will be used. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, again, with this being a um, just a pilot, a shorter um, chunk of time, they are um, using one piece is the um, Romeo and Juliet book is one example in one book that's being used. But then within each of the, let me just put this up here. Um, so like within each of the curriculums, each of the grade levels, there are going to be um, books that are list listed out um, that they'll be using. So like within here, here are some of the texts um, for the telling stories in the 10th grade. Um, there are more um, videos that are being used in this piece, but then if I was, for example, to go into the dream of home ownership um, within this one, you can see the number of texts and short articles that are a part of this as well. So um, there are um, like full trade books or full novels that are being used, um, but in some of the units, they are using more shorter texts or memoirs or um, published articles as well. So you can see these are all articles that they'll be reading about um, this topic. Um, and just seeing uh, Lisa's question in there as well. Um, Brooke, that's something that I can send um, that lays out all the, the text um, articles and videos that will be used and available. That would be great. I, I was just 
Oh, I was wondering if I could just ask, um, is it, is it um, unfair to say that, that lately it seems like there's a lot less full novels being read in school, full pieces and more short stories and short articles? I'm just curious about that. Um, I would say that um, just from, from my background with um, the curricula that we work with K to 12, um, our curriculum are based on full um, authentic trade books um, all the way down to the kindergarten level. Um, and the same with this piece too. There are There, there is the ability um, to choose units that have full trade books. Um, in this case, one of them is in the ninth grade, it has the Romeo and Juliet. Um, I think in this pilot, um, in the just the sections that are being chosen in the other grades, it doesn't have a full, a full novel but there are full novels that are available within the curriculum as well. And then thank you. If you could send Lisa's question is, is there a full list of text articles and videos and books that will be um, available? And uh, if you send that to us, Dan, we will be sure to post that on our website um, so that you have access and you can see that full list. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay, thank you. And WT has a question. I'm going to allow WT to talk. Go ahead, WT. You can unmute and ask your question. Hi, thanks. Um, this is actually Terry Gerald. I signed into a different account on accident. Um, my son is in Mr. Matthews's class, and he is doing Romeo and Juliet right now. Is what he's doing in that class this curriculum, or is it just, I don't know, um, or as part of what he's doing with Romeo and Juliet, this curriculum, I'm just, cause I can look at what he's doing and to get a better feel for what this curriculum is, if that's what he's doing. And Romeo and Juliet has been part of the curriculum um, at the high school level before. Um, as we mentioned, our teachers are piloting right now. Um, they're in the process of piloting different curriculum. I can't remember if Romeo and Juliet was one of the units that they are piloting. I'm seeing on my leadership team say yes. Um, so yes, they are probably using this curriculum then to pilot and using it. When I say use the curriculum, really looking at the lessons, you know, um, the lessons, how they're aligned to standards, what the activities are, uh, what the discussion prompts are. So um, really getting that full experience. That was a great question too, thank you. The teachers were able to choose uh, what they wanted to pilot based on where they are in the year with their curriculum and what they know. So they were able to look at the full curriculum and then choose these are the units for that we want to pilot and that we want to implement with our students right now to get student voice. So that's what is you're seeing. Any other questions? You guys have some really good questions. We're so thrilled that you're here. Um, okay, and if, if there aren't questions, Nick, you still have, um, I'm sorry, not Nick, Dan, you still have a little more time. So if you want to share any other highlights about the curriculum, this time is yours. Yeah, thank you so much um, for your time tonight and um, for all these great questions. Um, I am really excited that you all are walking through it and um, that there's so many people that are joining this call to uh, look into and hear a little bit more about what um, your students are doing. Um, big thing for me, what I really like is actually, I'm gonna just click back um, one, um, one slide here, is that um, within the curriculum, um, being able to that I, I really like that there's a lot of choice for your teachers um for your teachers to choose what will fit best for your students um and even though they may be just piloting one of these development units what i really like is that there's the ability to to for choice within here for your teachers that they're able to choose um units that are going to fit um your students and also fit within um your demographics um best to um really help your students be successful but um, I, I do appreciate your time tonight um, and thank you for all these great questions.
Okay, thank you, Dan. Much appreciated for your time. Um, and again, I know you're filling in for Emily, so we appreciate um, and uh, want to thank you. And, and we look forward to getting that list with the, the full list of books. And if you can send that, we will post that along with the video. Yes, absolutely. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are ahead of schedule and our next presenter, um, I do not believe he is here yet, uh, but he should be signing in any moment. His name is uh, Nick Resnick and he is here by Inquiry by Design. So as I mentioned, uh, both of these are very high quality curriculums that we're looking at. And, and Carrie had talked about this too. When we say that we choose and David Douglas, that we choose from curriculum adopted by the State Board of Education, it goes through a very rigorous vetting process before we even ever look at it. Um, and those scorecards are actually available and, and we can share with you if you're interested to see what the state criteria is for looking at curriculum. So I cannot remember how many we started with at the high school level uh, in our review, uh, but I wanna say it was maybe nine, uh, nine different curriculums. And Carrie, correct me if I'm wrong. Seven. Seven at high school. Oh, seven at the high school level, seven different curriculums. So the high school definitely goes through uh, the state criteria. And again, both of these curriculums made that state criteria list. And then we look at it with our local priorities. And so we're just narrowing it down then to our final two and then to our final one. So, so again, whichever we choose, you can be assured that these have gone through a very thorough vetting process and are high quality. Um, okay, I see another question. Will the new curriculum be used at the AP college level in English classes also? No, thank you for asking that, Lisa. That's a, a great question. These are for the core English classes at the high school. So English one, English two, English three, and English four. Um, is what we're adopting for. I should also say that uh, this curriculum is not for our online academy. If any of you are part of our David Douglas online academy, they use a fully digital curriculum called Apex. Um, so these are just for our, our core English classes at the high school. So thank you for that. And I do believe Nick Resnick should be hopping in. I just got an email from him. So Luan, is he in our participant list? Uh, he has, has not come in yet. Okay. He should be jumping in any minute here. Luan, I think it might be inquiry by design. Is that? Yes, inquiry by design. Okay, I just moved uh, inquiry okay. by design. Thank you, Friday, for catching that. Okay, hello, Nick. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are all of you? We're doing great. Thank you for hopping in early. We're a little bit ahead of schedule, so definitely appreciate that. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Nick, so you can share with our community all about Inquiry by Design and the student experience if we were to select your curriculum. And you will have 15 minutes to present, so roughly we'll have you stop at 7 uh, p.m. and then uh, the community family members can ask questions as well. Okay, that sounds great. Um, okay. so I spent my time here. Great. Cool. Would you like me to share or are you going to share? Yes, uh, we'll let you share your screen. Okay, great, great. All I apologize. Let me see. All right. Can I get a thumbs up from anybody that you're able to see the PowerPoint? Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, well, good evening, everybody. I feel really grateful to be here tonight um, with parents. Uh, I'm also a parent myself. And uh, just taking the time tonight to be here and learn about curriculum, that is so incredible. So grateful to be here. Um, Inquiry by Design is a 
three through 12th grade ELA curriculum. Um, and tonight we're really speaking about our high school um, particular course, so ninth through 12th grade. I'm gonna quickly try to go through the values and beliefs that we hold really close to our hearts every day, um, the IBD curriculum itself, so you could see what that is, and then also some digital supports and amplifications that we provide students um, on a daily basis. So something that our team always thinks about, considers, and really looks into are the districts that are interested in our curriculum. Um, and since the moment that we connected with David Douglas, you're your committee's priorities linked up really well with inquiry by design's values and what we work towards every single day. Um, so we are only an English language arts curriculum company. That's all we do. And we fanatically work to ensure that our curriculum and the text that we put in front of students represent their identities and their life experiences. We also work through our um, ongoing revisions and making sure that we have up-to-date copyrights we ensure that the material is relevant and that it's talking about topics that students are engaging in uh, today. And so, of course, we have some of the, um, you know, historical authors that you may have had in your classrooms um, in high school, but we really work to ensure that we are modifying those. We are really representing our diverse populations and we are making sure that students can connect with different ideas that may not be their identities, but our identities of their peers in their classrooms. Additionally, our curriculum, um, one of our uh, slogans is no fake work. So we wanna make sure that students have multiple ways to demonstrate their learning in authentic and meaningful ways. Um, so we don't have a lot of worksheets. We don't necessarily have um, read this text and engage in these three comprehension questions as the only way to understand students' progress or connection with the information. Um, we really try to make sure that there's multiple and flexible ways for students to demonstrate their learning. I also wanna hit here the embedded scaffolds. So in our curriculum, you won't see anything where it says, okay, students are below grade level for reading, pull these students out and do something differently. You won't find that. You'll find embedded scaffolds that support differentiation. So we know that all of our students are capable of connecting with grade level ideas and content. Now, if they're not able to completely read at that level, that's something for us to come in within those embedded supports on. And it feels like something that, that uh, David does, the school district also really values and prioritizes. Um, and you'll see that as I move through some of this presentation. The last thing is, especially in the high school space, you wanna make sure that we are preparing those students for college and career. So we need to be backed in research and we need to make sure, like it says here, that there's explicit vocabulary instruction right, that there's an emphasis on building background knowledge, that we are tending to these areas that we know allow students to access rigorous and complex texts as they will here in high school, but as they will also in college and career. So those were your priorities um, and what we uh, and every one of our team members um, really are committed to is ensuring that our curriculum and pedagogy are anchored by three deeply held beliefs. So we believe complexity is for everyone. And that's about those embedded scaffolds, right? Like just because you might not be able to read at grade level, um, we all can't read at the same level, but we believe that students deserve access to those ideas and they deserve access to be in conversation, right? About trying to understand better other people's perspectives and their perspectives. So it's not necessarily um, for us, we recognize that all students deserve complexity, uh, and we create those embedded scaffolds rather than differentiating lessons for different student levels. We believe people get smarter together. So as you'll notice as I progress through these slides, our lessons are all engaged in students working together. So students working in small groups, students working in whole groups, um, and different varying ways in which that happens. So not very many times are students working independently by themselves for um, an extended period of time. The research doesn't indicate that that's how students truly learn um, and, and connect with ideas and, and, and really understand all of the information that's coming out of the things they're reading. Um, so, so we really deeply believe that we all get smarter together and our pedagogy, our instruction runs students through that. 
And then we believe students deserve authentic, meaningful work. So that's connected to that no fake work slogan. Um, you're not gonna find workbooks. You're not gonna find a tons of like comprehension prompts. What you are gonna find is students responding through writing assignments to big questions that have open, that, that have open answers, right? That the teacher's not sitting in front of the room saying, I'm waiting for this response from my students. No, the lesson is about students generating ideas and us thinking about what those students believe and trying to um, you know, facilitate as the educator or the teacher and they're try to facilitate those ideas into some type of coherent story. Um, so our curriculum really has to, to make sure that we're doing that for students. Um, we have a series, um, this quote really resonates with us because if you look at the second portion of it, I really wanna focus on the effort-based scaffolded arcs of work that feature massive amounts of discussion, writing, and reflection. So what our curriculum does, right, which the research says, is it provides these ongoing cycles of work for students that help really bring them through um, feeling the complexity and feeling the difficulty. But as this kind of Nike swish is here, it brings them into being, um, having like an affect that's like, this is hard, I wanna quit. You know, just like when we learn a new uh, sport or a new musical instrument, or we try to sing for the first time, it's really hard, right? And unless you have a coach there to bring you through these steps to move you out of that difficulty, you often get stuck and you get frustrated and you don't like what you're doing. So what Inquiry by Design does is it has these cons consistent rituals and routines that allow students to know, like, we got you, we're going to pick you up when you fall. You know, we're here. And so that's what we do is build the capacity of the teacher through on the bottom of this graph um, in the horizontal axis. Uh, you will notice that we bring them through these rituals and routines. Now students begin to lean on those, right? They understand them. They understand them not only in English language arts classroom, but they know how to use those as they move on, um, you know, to college or career or different grade levels. They can lean on those to understand this is how I move out of difficulty. So we have the honor to work with many districts throughout Oregon um, and Portland Public Schools uh, is one of our partners. And this is a quote from a teacher there. And throughout what I just shared with you, um, this, is, this is the type of sentiment that generally comes out regarding IBD. Students are talking in ways I have never seen before. I have seen a dramatic change in my students' love for reading and writing because they are the stars. I'm excited and energized because I am fascinated with the notion that there is no need to have all the answers. It is very freeing as a teacher to step back and watch them thrive. I'm gonna slow down. I remember there's a lot of translation happening. I apologize, translators. Um, so a day in the life of IBD, what will your student be doing? What will it look like? What will it feel like? Uh, so every single day and every single lesson, there's small and whole group discussions. So here's some examples uh, about some districts um, that are working right now um, with us. Every single day and every lesson, students will be annotating. As you notice those students doing, they have their student readers open and they're working in the text. That is every day. And that is the type of um, skills we want them to have, not only for English language arts, right? But for, for their life. And then lastly, we do have some dynamic aspects. So we have a lot of, um, we have Google Jam boards and PowerPoints that students can contribute to. We often have student posters that they're working on and they're doing gallery walks, which is grouping of students and moving on from poster to poster of their own new ideas. And there's things like search and study, which are techniques we're trying to teach them, again, not just for today in this classroom, but so they can access complex ideas throughout their life. And so, uh, let's see. So, when, it, when uh, you think about inquiry by design or any good language arts curriculum, they're gonna have these three areas. So I just want to make sure we name that. And our cycle of inquiry that we bring students through 
um, it generally starts with a text and doing some compre comprehension work. Then we move into some interpretation and analysis. So that really means what do you think about the text? How does it sit with you? You know, what's what's your perspective on what's happening? And getting students to dig into those rich, rich questions where again, we select texts that actually don't necessarily have an answer there um, because we wanna leave that open for students to, to have that interpretation and to have that argument and that discourse. And then we also uh, weave in, right, the standards-based uh, genre work that does show up um, for the ninth and 12th grade students. So with such a focus um, on diversity and your student population and, and the districts, honestly, that we um, serve in the majority of our portfolio, um, we, we want to make sure that they recognize and that we recognize that Students deserve texts that reflect their identities and offer insight into others and to holistic ways. That students deserve texts and tasks that create opportunities for critical reflection points uh, and socio-political socio awareness. Students deserve texts and tasks that address issues relevant to their lives. And by um, texts and tasks, we, we just mean like the readings being put in front of them and the tasks is what are we asking? What are we asking students to write about? So that task, it just means like, what are we asking them to write about? Um, and we wanna make sure those things address things that are relevant to their lives that they can engage with and be honest about in terms of um, their considerations and their thoughts and their opinions. And lastly, students deserve the opportunity and support to build their own independent reading lives. And I haven't touched on that much, but something inquiry by design deeply embeds in our curriculum is a structure around independent reading. So one of our main goals is that your child leaves an inquiry by design classroom or a year having a love for reading that they never had before because we encourage and support their connection to that. And we support our teachers with understanding how to create the conditions and the culture so all students can reflect on and connect with texts that they actually care about, that are not part of the curriculum, right? That are part of things they choose. And then we give them the tools to learn how to reflect on that and understand like if that's working for them, if it's not working for them and how they can move forward with that. So what does uh, inquiry by design exactly look like? I think I was out a minute or two. Um, students will have those student readers every single day that you saw in those photos. Um, so if you're looking here, the bigger books, those are teacher manuals, and then these little smaller books um, are student readers. And they just, they, they literally are just like little books that look like this. Um, so that's, that's the curriculum. And what your student is gonna do is inter, interact with the complex text every single day and be asked to read and underline and note take and just, just be you know, in connection with that text. And we know that that's a skill necessary um, for their life. Hey Nick, since you're on this and, and maybe you'll get to it, but we are getting two questions and I know we're a little bit early, uh, but since you're talking about the text, um, there's questions about, um, one question, um, will students see uh, full novels or only pieces of whole works? And then again, getting a full list of the text, the articles and the videos and the books that will be used in the curriculum. So I don't know if you can speak um, right. to how that works in Inquiry by Design just while you're on this, this slide. <laughs> yeah, definitely, thank you for that. Um, so we can provide you an Excel spreadsheet that has all of that breakdown. I'll make sure to get that over to Brooke so she can share with the community at large. Absolutely. Shares the authors, the text, every single thing that um, you had just mentioned that's in that curriculum. Um, now going to the whole novels, there are a few um, novels and a few plays. That is not the majority of our curriculum. Um, there's about one at each grade level. And what we have seen in the research is that by allowing students access to um, a lot of different ideas, 
and not sticking in kind of one theme or one story that may uh, cause, you know, 20, 50% of students to kind of move on from that instruction because they're just not connecting with the text. Um, our curriculum really values a, a, a um, breadth of authors and a breadth of um, topics and focuses on different identities and subject matters. So uh, we, we don't have very many um, long like novels. Um, again, we do have about one per grade level and that could be a play, a graphic novel um, or a novel, but we, uh, we really follow the research around more shorter texts and, and that actually allowing students to connect with it um, and see that range of perspectives. Did I miss any part of that question by chance? I believe you answered it, and but I think getting that list of um, everything that you're going to send to us, I think will be incredibly helpful. And again, we will post that full list on our website. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so our, our full curriculum is teacher manuals, student readers, and then a subset of flexible use guidebooks. Um, and those guidebooks are really around the writing program. Um, so it helps teachers and their flexible use because teachers internalize kind of their processes and structures and then figure out um, ways that we suggest it throughout the teacher manuals. But we really want to leave that, especially in the high school space, up to the teachers to be able to respond to the students. Um, so the flexible use resource guides are often that embedded differentiation that allow teachers um, to assess students based on the units and then move um, and then figure out what that differentiated set of supports are that they can embed into the future lessons. Um, the only thing I quickly want to say here is that we really work to cohere um, and vertically align our curriculum across grade levels, right, and across units. So students that have our curriculum in ninth grade, they will move through kind of a similar scope and sequence in 10th and 11th and 12th. Um, and that really, again, the research shares that, that that level of a consistency and that level of students already engaging with a similar structure of a unit allows them then to focus on that complexity and, and their growth rather than trying to like figure out what, you know, the teacher's trying to get them to do that day. They, they like have some internalized understanding of that. And so we really focus on that in terms of grade spans. Just about to wrap up here. Um, in today's day, of course, we need some digital stuff. So what we provide in terms of the digital space is really thinking about the teacher um, and how they can maximize the ideas of the students. And so a lot of our work deals with teachers charting information um, and gaining ideas from all of the students. And so a lot of our digital components um, allow for teachers to capture that information uh, in real time. Um, sorry, I didn't see it. I didn't see the Jamboard in this grouping right here. But as you noticed before, um, a lot of the information is so teachers can gather ideas from students. And so there's these interactive uh, modalities where teachers can consistently engage with students, get their ideas. And then let's say in two weeks, students need to write something about this unit the student could go back, right, to 10 different charts that have all of their peers' ideas, and they can leverage that thinking for their writing work. And so we never want students to be in this solo space alone because that's not real, the real world. Um, and so what we've done is we've really created an environment where students can write in a digital space, where students can think in a digital space, and they can connect with their peers as well in that digital space and access not only their ideas, but other people's ideas. So, so I just uh, wanted to open up for any questions. Okay, we're getting some really great questions. And I know there's been some questions about the advanced placement classes. And um, these two curriculums that we're considering are not for the, the AP classes. So they are for English 1, English 2, English 3, and English 4. 
So just want to be clear about that. Any other questions for Nick and inquiry by design? Okay, hopefully we gave enough wait time. So again, want to thank you, Nick, for sharing about your curriculum. Um, and this is very, very helpful. And we will look forward to getting that list from you that we can post on our website uh, with the full list of reading and text and everything so that our, our community can see that. So um, we will talk soon. And thanks again for your time tonight. Actually, uh, we... another question came oh, in. Oh, there's another question, okay. Go ahead, who? Oh, it's in the Q&A, okay. The question, you mentioned the digital space of interactive stuff, live interaction. Okay, I think I the could, question. Okay, go ahead, Nick. I, I could try to talk to that. Um, so, so um, throughout, you know, uh, a lot of teaching and learning, you often are capturing things from students um, and you're often asking students to write about things. And often that writing is in that student's own individual notebook or that students, um, you know, let's say you're reading a story and at the end the, the teacher says, uh, what is the it that it hurts? which might be part of the story. And that's what you see up here. And students are like capturing that information in their own individual spaces. And maybe like two kids raise their hand and share an idea. But there's nowhere that's capturing a lot of students' ideas. And that allow, especially high school students, because as you move into college, it's you know so collaborative or career, it's really collaborative. There's no place that allows students to lean on their peers' thoughts uh, to, to like uh, help them create better ideas or perhaps to help them um, establish their own idea that they already believed. So what we do and when, when we say in the digital work, it's not this like personalized solo headphones, kids on it for an hour type of personalized learning experience. It's more of a collaborative space to help teachers and students be able to access all of the incredible thinking that happens throughout the unit um, in a shared space that students know how to like, um, that students are taught by teachers how to access and also allow the teacher to access, you know, a week later, they can go back to this jam board and say, let's, you know, come up with some patterns. What are some ideas? What are some categories of things happening here? You know, instead of that's available and that's one of um, kind of the deep values we hold in making sure that happens in the classroom. So I think Nick, uh, hopefully you answered that, but um, so even in the digital space, it says, will there be live interaction? I'm trying to yeah, think. That, so that, was me, that was yeah. me asking yeah, that sorry. question. I'm I was more. wondering if, will, will there be like discussions live in the room about the material? Uh, yeah, yeah. So outside of the digital space, 100%. So that's the main, our, you know, the main focus of our curriculum is uh, th these two, is the small and whole group discussions. And so each after, you know, an initial read, which is always a read aloud, um, then students move into these collaborative conversations. And so the digital piece really only comes in at those moments where teachers usually ask a question, you get two answers and then you move on with the lesson. And so what we try to do is in those moments where teachers wanna ask a question, we wanna hold all students accountable for providing a response. If they're a, you know, if they're like a one-to-one -one classroom or they're classrooms that typically use computers, we wanna make sure that there's an available modality so every student is expected to contribute and all students could look back on other students thinking. So the main modality is in-person discussion. But at those moments of time where teachers usually get a few hands, we wanna make sure that all students thinking is, is kind of alive and, and available. Thank you for clarifying, I really appreciate it. 
Okay. Okay, well, I think our time with Nick is done. Again, thank you, Nick, uh, much appreciated. And uh, we will close with, again, just a review about how you can give feedback about what you believe is best for your students. So um, Elisa is going to share that with you now. I could jump off, right? Okay, see ya, thanks. So thank you again for your uh, time tonight. Uh, wanting, I wanted to share with you what you will see when you log on to the David Douglas website. Um, you can see- um, Elise, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but we can see your desktop, but not the, you have a lot of files, <laughs> but we can't see the um, presentation. Thank you, how is that? Yes, now we can see it. Oh, excellent, thank you. Um, so <laughs> much more exciting for you to see is um, the uh, picture of our David Douglas um, district website, where you will find the information for um, all of the resources that were talked about and mentioned this evening, as well as where we will um, put the recording of this event and um, the additional resources that we have requested from each of the publishers. They will also be added here for you to access them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link here on um, the website, which leads you to our David Douglas website page. And I'm thinking that you can see this tab. Um, and I'm going to, this is the, um, this is the part of our page that um, shows different um, pictures and we'll scroll through for you as you're on there. And as I scroll down, I can see I'm now in the latest news section of our page right there on the front. And um, that we have the language arts curriculum adoption, family and community feedback and resources link here. It lists February 22nd because that was the first night um, when we started with our presentation to elementary, but this will include um, our elementary, middle school, and high school resources. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here so you can see where you will find all of the resources. This tells you a little bit about our process and then um, scrolling through you'll see elementary. Um, and the elementary resources, as well as the survey links. Keep, I continue to scroll down and I see the middle school curriculum uh, demo account access and um, the middle school uh, survey links. And then continuing to scroll um, is where you will find the resources for this evening's event. Here you can see inquiry by design. And when I click on here, I actually see the page that was presented this evening. Um, so you see a little bit about um, the materials and um, where you can watch a video around the materials. So this is information here that you can find about inquiry by design. I'm gonna click back. When I click on Odell, I see that page that we saw in the presentation. And if I wanted to explore the uh, ninth grade materials, um, this is where I could click in and explore the materials that students would um, have access to if this is the uh, curriculum that we adopt. I'm going to go back to our David Douglas website page. Um, and here you can see that once I have reviewed the materials, um, I could click on the uh, survey. And you will see here that um, we're asking for some demographic data of what high school does your student attend, what grade level or levels you may be responding around um, two students of yours that are attending at the high school level. And then we ask that you show us um, and tell us about what your priorities are. 
So we would like your input on what you believe are the most important priorities for the success of your students or students and to please rank the following. Again, all of these are important, but we ask that you give us a, um, your feedback on what is the most important for your students. So I may choose this priority as the most important. I may choose this priority as the second most important. Here, the third. Um, this one, the fourth. This one is the sixth and here, or that won't work. The, that's the fifth and most important. Um, and that would be how I am ranking those um, items by priority. Um, and then if I've had a chance, I could review, um, based on the review of the materials, what, would you, what do you believe would support, best support the needs of your students? This is optional here and optional is comments or anything else you would like us to know that we can um, share with our decision-making team. And then you would press the submit button. We ask that you complete the survey um, by the beginning of uh, spring break. So as students are moving into spring break, we ask that we have this data from you by then so that we have a chance to take it all together um, and uh, make it so it's easy to read and see and understand for our decision-making team so that they can use it um, when they are deciding which curriculum to move forward with. So I'm going to click back. And again, I'm back on our webpage um, where all of the resources reside and um, where our translated um, copies of these resources are also available. We hope um, that you will be able to um, uh, access everything easily and um, be able to fill out the survey for us, um, which we'll find really helpful. Your input is very important to us. I'm gonna um, click and Elise, back. can you stay there one second? We do have a question. Is the IBD link only the PDF? I clicked through the Odell site and there was a lot of specific information on the curriculum, but I didn't see that in the IBD link. Uh, I believe that the IBD, sorry. Um, I, think I saw it at the top there um, of the PDF there. Get to, is that it? Let's click here and see. So that's going to be a video. Uh, we will make sure that uh, we have resources available for you to, um, to review. So not just a video about the materials in a one page document. We would like to have um, demo materials available for you. So uh, we will make sure that um, we have that updated for you and added to the website. I'm going to go ahead and click back. Um, and move back to our um, presentation. So again, um, just to let you know, again, it's a short questionnaire with optional questions and an opportunity to voice your feedback. And again, it's due by uh, the beginning of spring break. So we wanted to um, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, we will hang on if there's any further questions, but uh, really appreciate the robust participation and um, your time this evening in, um, in learning more about the curriculum that we are reviewing for our high school um, students. Uh, James has a question. Uh... James, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Sorry, this is more just a, uh, just a comment because I know we're, we're wrapping up here. And I just want to say thank you to the district and everyone that's participating. We, uh, as parents of four Dave Douglas students now, greatly appreciate the district uh, keeping the community involved and keeping us up to date and trying to make sure that all voices are heard. And um, as someone who teaches youth, uh, this has been a great opportunity to review different options. So again, just thank you to everyone involved to bring this about and keep, uh, keep us as parents and community involved.
Thank you so much, James. That that means the world to us. That's what we strive to do. So greatly appreciate um, your your comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope that you have a good evening and thank you again for um, for joining us tonight. All right, there's, there's no other questions. I am going to end this uh, webinar. Thank you everyone for coming today.